Welcome back to the Sharpshooters Wrestling Podcast. This is Raw is Retro. It's the 16th of November, 1998. We've gone back in the way, way back machine like Wayne's World. For the Raw is Retro. <laughs> I love that film. Or, I am your host, Ross. Yeah. Or, Ross, we've just had a Bill and Ted excellent adventure. <laughs> yes. Back into Raw is Retro. I'm not, I, I always have to reference Wayne's World because I'm not allowed to watch it because it's my favourite film of all time. One and two, hands down. I'm... Absolute classics. My wife absolutely hates them. I think they're so stupid that she won't watch them. So, what? Yeah, I know. I'm going to introduce my eight year old to them this week um, to see how she likes them. Um, she'll like them because she's like. I don't she know like if she'll get a lot of the jokes though. Nah, she won't. But she'll laugh because I'm laughing. So that's, that's what parents. I do. Is, do you know what I do think? I do think. <clears throat> yeah. We need to get her reviewing one of these episodes at some point. She does like wrestling. She watches it with me. So probably more than modern think, stuff, though. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we need to get her to watch some of the one of the r- random old ones to see what she thinks as a child's perspective. Because we were essentially children yeah. when we were watching these teenagers, but we were essentially children when we were watching these. <laughs> well, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's our next big pay per view? We're just off the back of Survivor Series, so we've got uh, Capital Carnage. She's not going to be forced to watch that. Raw Rumble, Raw Rumble '98. She'll like that because I'm in for a level top rope. 99. So, yeah. yeah, so we can get her to watch that. And uh, I'll see if she'll pop on here and do a little. She loves YouTube, so it's a chance to be on YouTube. She'll, uh, she'll be all over that. Yeah. <laughs> she'll put, oh, she might be pissed that McMahon wins the Rumble, though. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see what she I thinks. Mean, if you don't know, if you're watching this, like, oh, no, I don't know what happened. You're crazy. <laughs> Imagine watching this in real time, hoping to catch up at some point. <laughs> it's never going to happen. You're always going to be months and months and months behind. <laughs> anyway, let's get into this week's episode of Raw is Retro. We are here, like I said, on the 16th of November 1998. It is the show after the Survivor Series, where it was an, an entirely tournament based show with uh, a woman's tag match, a woman's uh, championship match, and a triple threat tag team title match. And that was it. Yeah. The rest of it was the title um, tournament. Um, I'll quickly run through the results. There's a lot, so bear with me. Mankind beat Dwayne Gill in 30 seconds. Al Snow defeated Jeff Jarrett. Uh, Stone Cold beat the Boss Man by DQ. Uh, Lord Stephen Regal defeated X Pac. Or it, it was a double count out, so a bye for someone there. Uh, Ken Shamrock defeated Gold Dust by submission. The Rock beat the Boss Man in three seconds. Undertaker <laughs> defeated Kane, because of course he did, in the longest match of the evening so far. Uh, <laughs> Mankind beat Al Snow. Rock beat Ken Shamrock because, of course, that's happened a million times this year. Um, Sable beat Jackie to win the title. Yeah, she yeah. wasn't a champion, was she? Yeah, so Sable's now your women's champion. Glorious lineage for that. Shane was a special guest referee for that one. Uh, Mankind beat Austin in the semi finals of the tournament. The Rock defeated The Undertaker in the other semi final. The New Age Outlaws defeated D'Lo and Mark Henry and the Headbangers to take the titles. I think they weren't champions, were they? I think the Headbangers were champions. No, they retained, didn't they? Did they? I can't remember. We yeah, were champions since the 30th of August, 1998. Wow, okay, fair play. Um, and then in our final of the t- tournament, The Rock defeated Mankind by submission to win the vacant WWF Championship. Which, just reading out like that, sounds like it was fine. But what actually happened, Manny? The most interesting thing about <laughs> it was how the McMahon screwed Stone Cold Steve Austin in... Uh, was it the final? No, the semi-final. Semi. Yeah, semi against semi-final. Mankind, yeah. Uh, so v- Shane McMahon was the referee... I think the appointed referee in this match. Yeah. And he goes to count the three... As he's about to hit the three, stops and then gives yep. Austin the fingers, <laughs> and then uh, and then I think Mankind was able to roll up um, roll up Austin for a quick yeah. three. Yeah, which led to the final against the obviously Mankind made it through because um, he's the the corporate guy at this point. But yeah. no, it all it all turns in the final, which I was like shocked and heartbroken as a child when this happened, because. Like, not that the rock turned, because the rock's always a bit of a bad guy, but they screwed mankind. I've always liked mankind, like as a kid. I think I I think I um wasn't I don't think I was heavily concerned. I think about that. I was more concerned that the McMahon screwed uh Steve. Steve, yeah. 
Well, yeah, he sh- it sh- the final should have been Rock versus Austin, shouldn't it? That's kind of that's what ninety eight was. Yeah, um, but yeah, the, they screw pretty much the same as the uh, Montreal screw job. Um, they call for the bell immediately as soon as the submission's locked in and hand rock the title and he is now the corporate champion which is how we yeah. kick off this episode of raw um vince walks down to the ring he walks he doesn't he's not in his wheelchair anymore he's back fully um fit and healthy he's got shane he's got his stooges he's got a boss man and he's got his corporate champion corporations here it's not in its final evolution um, at this point yeah. but it's it's here and this is a great promo from The Rock. Like the the, the, the chants start immediately. Like Rocky sucks and why Rocky Rye. It, it's so loud, so loud. That's the good thing about this era is they were always really a hot crowd. Yeah, and like, um, like even WCW at the time, they were still a hot crowd, and um, yeah, yeah, it meant a lot more. Yeah. At this time, to these people, yeah, absolutely. Um, this is quite it's quite a long opening segment, but it does lead eventually to Austin um, coming down to the ring. Um, he gets straight in the face when giving everyone double birds. <laughs> yeah, uh, he says if he thinks the rocks are set out, um, son of a bitch, and give me hell yeah, which gets an incredibly loud hell yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just it's a, it's a really really good segment. It, it, yeah, and then um, so basically, lot. Austin says uh, he's still on his contract. He's still owed a um, title match. Yeah, and then Vince is trying to retract that. He's like, "No, that's not true. <laughs> I, I just like you had your title match. You lost. Yeah, and uh, he's taken it to um, Judge Mills Lane, which uh, <laughs> I didn't actually know was a real judge. I just thought he was a referee for a referee. <laughs> death match." <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I honestly thought that as well. Yeah, <laughs> and then he says, "No, it's uh, it's declares that there must be a Rock versus Austin title match tonight on Monday Night Raw." <laughs> Excellent. That's a really good way to follow up that that hot end to the pay per view with a really hot main event, like setting it up. It's it's just booking done right, booking yeah. done exactly what meant, you want. It just means more. Yeah. It sets your two biggest guys up in a title match. The rest of the show would fly by because you're waiting for that that main event. Yeah, and my first match. Probably, even though you're probably not going to get a real ending or anything. No, of course you're not. <laughs> it's obviously going to be a DQ finish, but yeah. we'll get there in a bit. Um, we start with the Outlaws and X-Pac taking on the Oddities with Luna and the ICP. Why? Um, <laughs> what, yeah, what are DX doing fighting these losers? Like they've got bigger fish to fry. <laughs> and then the nonsense that happens after this is one of the, one of ICP jump on fucking. Giant the uh, Golga or whoever it was. Yeah. <laughs> What's the yeah, so they argue all the way back to the dressing room. Um the headbangers jump on Road Dog, uh but he gets chased off by Xbox and um, Billy Gunn. Like what the hell is oh, going oh, on? Sh- shaggy two dot dope <sighs> hits Golga. I'm going by Manny Too Fresh now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm Rossy too sleepy. Um <laughs> <laughs> we see Mankind coming into the arena um, talking to himself he's feeling betrayed and now he's coming home to whatever that means but uh, we see Vince talking to the corporation um, which they are I mean this is the first sort of sit down with the corporation which I like, like I'm not calling this corporation till once not yet no so I'm calling it once but it's going to happen at the end of the night the actual uh, handshaking of recruiting Ken Shamrock. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, fair enough. Yeah, uh, we have um, IC champ Ken Shamrock heading down to the ring. He grabs the mic and complains that he got screwed by the big boss man. Uh, so he takes the challenge to boss man and throws the IC title on the line. Um, he awaits that chump's answer. Uh, we get Val Venus taking on Mark Henry in a match. Um, he actually finishes with a three count. Val rolls up the big boy um, for the win. Um, I. <laughs> Is, is this the is this the startings of sexual chocolate? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so China appears on the on on the ramp after taking a couple of weeks off. Yeah, it's been there for a uh, while. From yeah. Raw, um, they claim because of the lawsuit. I don't know what was really mm. going on. 
Uh, and then China, Henry basically gets on the mic and asks China to forget about the lawsuit and let's just grab dinner. <laughs> no sex. And then he I'll recites a love movie, poem. Yeah. <laughs> and according to these notes, D'Lo tries to hold back the tears. <laughs> D'Lo's a great actor. Um, yeah, we, we see uh, Patterson rejoining Vince in the corporation in the locker room. Uh, he couldn't find Mankind. Um, Vince says you couldn't find your ass, which is quite funny. Um, we get the Blue Blazer and Jeff Jarrett taking on Goldust and Steve Blackman. Oh, Ross, before we oh, I cover this match, let, let's just do this whole let's find Mankind. <laughs> <laughs> because, get it out of the way. Yeah, because everyone essentially has their turn at looking for Mankind. Uh, and then yeah. they then they all go. Uh, <laughs> Briscoe, Slaughter, um, who am I missing out? Patterson. Yeah. I don't think they send the boss man at any point. No. And I don't think... Do they find him? Or it, someone's just raging he, in the... In... He, he finds them, doesn't he, basically? Yeah. Um, yeah, and he, he stomps on their balls and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Uh, he stomps on <laughs> Patterson's balls, beats Briscoe and Slaughter. And yeah, he's just he's just beating up a load of old men, which is quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for that. <clears throat> uh, yes, our match is the Blue Blazer and Jarrett with Deborah taking on Goldust and Steve Blackman. Goldust and Steve Blackman is an odd, odd pairing, um, but they get the win. Um, Blackman hits the bicycle kick on the Blue Blazer for the win in two minutes. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> watching uh, and then Bla- Blackman tries to remove the mask. Yes, uh, and then he is attacked by Jarrett and Owen Hart. So who's under the mask? You are wrongfully accusing. Yeah, Owen sorry, Hart it's on me. Yeah, last week <laughs> being blue blazer, wrongfully accusing Owen Hart. Yeah, it can't, he's it retired. Can't he's, he's retired gone. yet. He shows yeah. up every week to attack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he better not receiving his pension and still working because that's not right. There's, there's laws against that. Uh, yeah, that- we get. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there is. Yeah. I don't know. I'll find out in a few years. I'm not fucking old. Um, let's send off. We're into the war zone. That's the start of Raw. Is done. The first hour flew by, really. I mean, the, half of it was taken up by The Rock's um, speech at the beginning of the show. Uh, oh, we get... the, the next few episodes, they do tend to fly by. Yeah, that's good. That means they're good shows, really. Or literally nothing happens. Like, it's either one of the two things, isn't it? The bad yeah. shows, the ones that seem to drag on forever. Uh, so you start the war zone with the Godfather taking on Stephen Regal. Godfather is flanked by his three halls, as this website has so lovingly put it. Um, we don't get a match, Manny, do we? No, because Regal <laughs> is now the corrupt Regal decides I'm going to take the <laughs> night off. I'll take the women uh, because he he off Godfather obviously offers up the women, and yeah. he says yeah. But then, and then um, we can't really say this word. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but as as he's well, taking yeah. the women away, uh, Godfather gets on the mic and says he's surprised that he took the women, saying that England ain't nothing but a place full of um, F, <laughs> Fs, uh, N-T-S. Yeah. <laughs> well, unnecessary. No need for that. <laughs> I mean, the fact that, that I'm not sure if that got bleeped out of, <laughs> back then. <laughs> No, it wouldn't have. Definitely not back then. No. Maybe on Raw, um, maybe on Sky. Sorry, they might have bleeped that out. Um, yeah, and then that leads to Regal coming back and uh, uh, and then <laughs> coming back and getting Godfather. They have a little scrap and then I think they're pulled yeah. apart. Yeah. Uh, we see outside the arena, Kane is just destroying a couple of technicians. Um who take some really good bumps for guys that aren't wrestlers. It's weird that. Um, we get uh, Bossman being pumped up uh, before his match with Ken Shamrock. Which is next. Ken Shamrock taking on the big boss man for the IC title. Um, I mean, it's fine, isn't it? It's fine. This is DQ. <laughs> I don't want to see Bossman wrestle. I liked Bossman in the early 90s. I don't need to see him in the late 90s. Yeah, but this is this is where um, Bossman uh, Boss and Shamrock are being separated and then Vince and Shane come to the ring. Uh, Vince mm. tells both of them to stop the violence. <laughs> I mean, you're uh, a wrestling promoter, Vince. That's the point of your company. 
Yeah, you're, you're, you sell violence, Vince. Uh, <laughs> and then he makes the case that Shamrock and himself aren't so different. They both came from broken homes and nobody gives yeah. a damn about them. <laughs> uh, and then... Uh, Vince cares because he understands Vince offers Shamrock a place in the McMahon family. That there's a corporate champion, a corporate enforcer, and every corporation needs a needs a dangerous man. <laughs> and Vince tells him to consider the offer, but it doesn't take him long to shake Vince's hand and the boss man's hand. So Shamrock has joined the corporation. There we go. Now yeah. it's the corporation. Now it's the corporation. <laughs> yeah. Uh we get uh, our next match is Gangrel and Edge, no Christian, taking on LOD 2000. And we love some LOD 2000 on this podcast. Oh, no, no, I don't care about this. This isn't a match. Hawk, <laughs> drunk Hawk, <laughs> is now climbing up the Titan Tron. <laughs> yep, you all know this. You've all seen this. You all know what happens. Uh, yeah. The, the, the match does take place, um, which ends in count out, I think. Or DQ, probably, but yeah, count out. Um, yeah, but we come back from the break, and Animal and Paul Ellering are trying to talk Hawk down from the top of the Titan Tron. Um, Tron starts climbing up it as well. Yeah. Animal refers to Hawk as Mike. What a, what a shoot. Um, Dross gives Hawk a pat on the chest. Was it a pat on the chest? No, he shoves him, Ross. He shoved him. <laughs> I saw it. He's a damn murderer. murderer. Murder. <laughs> JR puts on his quiet voice like someone has really died. And yeah, that's it. Do we ever see Animal again? Uh, Hawk again, sorry. I, d- I don't know. I don't know if we I don't know do. actually what comes of the. I, c- I can't actually remember what comes of this. I, I don't think they're <laughs> even on TV lie. for in a few weeks. <laughs> they probably have another two weeks off and make another comeback like nothing ever happened. Because we've done that three <laughs> times this year already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we get Sable out because what? How do you follow a man dying? We bring Sable out because why not? Um, yeah, and got Sable's now back in the same position she was like two months ago, <laughs> where yes. Vince, where Vince had his words with her. <laughs> yeah, Shane's turn. <laughs> <laughs> the fans didn't make Sable. The McMahon's made Sable. Um, yeah, it's literally the same thing, really. Yeah. It's literally exactly the same thing. Uh, we received news from JR that Hawk is breathing, so he's not dead. That's good to know. Um, we get Pats and Briscoe and Slaughter. They find Mankind and yeah, Mankind beats them all up. Uh, so, um, they're talking about the slam of the week on, on these notes. Uh, oh, yeah. Where The Rock blasts Mankind from behind with the WWF title at Survivor Series yeah. to win the title. Um, this time, this is brought to you by PlayStation's Medieval. Any chance you played that? I didn't play that. I don't remember Medieval. Is that... I've got an image in my head of a, like a, a skeleton wearing armour and he's holding his head under his arm. Is that Medieval? Or is that I thing? think so. Because in the next few weeks, they also bring up Glover and I don't remember that at all. <laughs> no, they're not big games for the era. I, yeah. I would have been well into PlayStation at this point, 98. I would have been all over this. But yeah, I don't, I don't remember that at all. Not at all. I think I was into Soul Calibur, uh, oh, the first yes. one on PlayStation at this point. Yeah, cracking game. Uh, we get our main event of the evening. It is The Rock with Ken Shamrock, the big boss man, Vince, and Shane McMahon taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin for the WWF Championship. Austin makes a really, really hot start in this. I love watching The Rock versus Austin. Like it's, it's just good every time. It's not, it's not wrestling. It's just two men punching and kicking each other. Do you know what the funny part about this match is? It was good. You would have thought someone someone out of the corporation would have would would uh, get the DQ for this match. No. <laughs> no, Undertaker appears and just levels Steve Austin yeah. with a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> levels like... him. <laughs> yeah, Taker knows what he's doing with the shovel. He's... Uh, he's... He's been digging graves for years. He knows what, exactly what to do with the shuffle. <laughs> but yeah, the amount of interference in this. Um, El Hebel gets pulled out of the ring at one point by Shamrock. Like, is yeah. that not a DQ? Like, surely that's a DQ. It is. At some point, <laughs> referees need to throw people out, but they're not doing their job properly. Inconsistent referee. Inconsistent We've been arguing referee. this on all shows for the last couple of weeks. 
<laughs> yeah, consistent. Um, and I'm not even talking about just wrestling. I'm talking about football, <laughs> American football, American all football. Of them. Yeah, <laughs> everything. The referee in the Seahawks game last night referred to the Seahawks as the Seattle Mariners. The, the penalty was against the Seattle Mariners, which is quite impressive. Um, but yeah, anyway, <laughs> refs don't know what they're doing. Vincent Mann doesn't know what the hell's going on. Why doesn't take us here? Um, where is Kane? Um, there's a load of stuff going on. Kane is gallivanting on destruction. <laughs> I mean, business is so hot at this point that they they can't drop the ball, regardless of what direction they go in. Every, it, it, this is arguably the peak. Really? It feels... Do you know what? The, these episodes of Raw at this moment feel like present-day Raw, where I give a damn. Yeah. Um, I know I gave a damn at this age about this. Like yeah, I, absolutely. I specifically remember because Raw is still coming on on Fridays. Yeah, in the UK at this point, in the very early ages of the internet on fifty six k dial up. Yes. Um, yeah, I was pulling up the pulling up the results and reading them on Monday, and then obviously rewatching it re-watching when it, it came Friday, on right? on on the Friday. Yeah, but this is this is like I'm fully invested. I care about what's going on, whereas like. The last few, if you ever, if you even watch the Yantar Emmanuel Marcus show for the last three years, that Tuesday show, you can yeah. see how very dismissive we are sometimes of what we watch. Yeah. And um, it's now where you kind of give a fuck about what's going on on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. That's yeah. all I want. It's, it's... I don't watch soaps. I watch wrestling for my stories. And I want them to, to have something to bring me back the next week. That's the point of it, surely, that there's something that there to bring you back. And the end of this week's Raw is Retro immediately makes you want to jump on the network and watch the next one because it's yeah. so hot. And that's what yeah, that's what wrestling is right now as well. I, I don't watch AEW, I can't comment on that, but Raw especially and SmackDown now with Bray Wyatt being back and what's happening on Raw with the, the main event scene there, it's so, so good. Yeah, I it have just piques your intrigue, account. isn't it? It leaves yeah. you with something like, "Oh, I need to watch next week." Yeah, because I want to know want. what's going on with this. It, it's yeah. these stories and the fact that you care about these individuals. Yeah, is the uh, one thing they got right. What Vince Russo is obviously is a lunatic and did a lot of other shit, but he would give stories to everyone. Doesn't matter who you are. There's a story. The OCP have got a story. Val Venus and Mark Emery have stories. Blue yeah, Blazers and doing stuff. at some Gold point, for stuff. one of them, you're going to care about it. But needless to say, the biggest stars at the moment are The Rock and Austin. Yeah. And they're in like big kind of things that are going on. The Rock's just turned. Steve Austin is like still in a feud with Vince McMahon, but now he's mm. got a side project of The Undertaker. Yeah. Um, so, like, it's keeping you entertained with everything that's going on. So, like, yeah. it, it's, it's this period, like, I'm sure it was the same with WCW because there was that period where it was like there's stuff going on in WCW right now where it's like yeah you care about it like you were you were either there you were either one side or the other because most I was one I I didn't tend to flip channels between TNT no, and same here. being no. on a Friday I didn't I didn't really tend to flip channels that much no. but when I did it was stuff that was quite that interesting that you would talk on school on Monday it's like um, Goldberg Goldberg versus the NWO and then and then yeah. DX and whatever Steve Austin was doing that particular week in The Rock, it was that that's what it was. Yeah, you had the four kind of pillars from each company that you could you could check out each week. Yeah, and yeah, to a point there is that now. Everyone I know has seen like who uh, has a passing interest in wrestling has watched that Bloodline clip from this week. Obviously, dating this show, but it's it's we're recording on the thirty first. But the SmackDown from last week where Sammy makes the um, Usy joke, the Usy <laughs> joke, yeah, and breaks everyone. Everyone's seen that. That's gone wild on social media. And if you don't like wrestling, you know, people have commented on that. Non-wrestling people have commented on that. Like, um, yeah. this is a UK thing, but like, it would be like uh, for you, it would be like um, Walmart tweeting this. Um, but like, Home Bargains tweeted, "Yeah, I'm feeling oozy today." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and, that has not happened for years, has it? Years yeah, and, years. and then that's you wouldn't think because like. The people that tend to shop at home bargains aren't your typical wrestling fan. No. So you wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily 
throw out a social media tweet like that, just out there mm. like that. But like it, it's yeah. encapsulated, encapsulated a lot that that Usi thing has gone, gone, gone viral. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, the, the 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 two are mirroring each other at the minute, which is great because this is the hottest period in wrestling, and we're hopefully getting towards something. We'll never see the numbers again currently, but we will see good, good wrestling and good storylines, and that's all I want from wrestling. Um, this episode of Raw, Manny, your MVP. Who was it? It's tough. This one's it tough. It's tough. It's a good episode. Um, do you know what? For the, the shot he laid on Steve Austin, I'm going to take <laughs> off. That was disgusting. That I know, was like I know, I know, I know in a couple of weeks, Steve Austin's going to get him back and he will be my MVP that week. But <laughs> this week, <laughs> I'm preempting it. This, I'm calling my shot, yeah. Ross. <laughs> this week, it's The Undertaker. <laughs> I like it, yeah. I mean, I can't disagree, uh, really. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Ken, because I liked Ken this evening. I liked his his terrible acting when he was trying to decide in that 30, uh, three seconds, sorry, before he took up Vince's offer to become part of the corporate uh, corporation. He's, con- he's heavily concussed, Ross. It takes he him is. <laughs> <laughs> Still to this day, he is heavily concussed. Um, yeah, Ken Shamrock. I think he's not had an MVP from me this entire year, so I'll, I'll give him one I this don't week. think he's ever got he never got oh, an MVP in a week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your match of the night, which was the best match for you this evening? Um, main of, Is it the main event? I think that's the only one that's really had a proper finish. Yeah, the main event. Yeah, give it to the main event. Yeah, I'm gonna actually no. Well of... I'm not giving no. it to a match. I'm giving it to the opening segment. The opening segment was really good. Yeah, fair I mean, enough. That's yeah. not necessarily a match, but it was a it was a very good opening segment. Yeah, it set up a lot of stuff. Yeah, and yeah. kind of explained a lot of stuff. So yeah, I like that. Um, but there we go. That is the end of this week's episode of Raw. We're out of the back of Summer uh, Survivor Series 1997. No, not eight. Sorry, God, I'm getting movies mixed up. Um. We'll be back next week with another episode. I mean, we're hurtling towards what well, our, our next pay-per-view, big pay-per-view is the Rumble, but we do have to get Capital Carnage and Rock Bottom in your house out of the way first before we get there. Um, two mega, mega shows where I'm guessing absolutely nothing happens. <laughs> buried Alive <laughs> match, Ross. A Buried that... Alive match is happening at Rock Bottom. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah, it is. Wow. Okay, we might have to watch that as well because that looks like a pretty good show looking at it now. We get the Brood versus the Job Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, I didn't actually realize formed on Raw. So we, like we said, at the, I think it was the top of the show. Um, we, we might have to start covering Sunday Night Checking Heat, out some heat, or at least reading yeah. what happens on Sunday Night Heat because I didn't realize um, Flash Funk and um, <laughs> Hardcore Holly or yeah. um, Bob Holly at the time. Had yeah. joined the job squad. Yeah, they're now part of the, the job squad. Yeah, that's that's all coming. Maybe we do YouTube Shorts where we just read the results from something like <laughs> Heat in 1998. <laughs> I tried that. that. I, I, I tried that. It's a little... It's, uh, I don't know. You need some weird... Um, what is it? Uh, oh, it skips my head. You need some oh, type right. of authorization. Um, oh, okay. Fair enough. It might it might be that we read them out on Instagram, but yeah, we do Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Instagram stories, something like heat. Check our Instagram out, which is at the Sharpshooters. You can find us over there. You can find us obviously on YouTube, right here. Click the like subscribe button, like like every video, share every video, because at the minute wrestling's hot. So share some stuff. People might be coming back to the product now who were watching twenty years ago. So share our stuff and start a conversation about wrestling in nineteen ninety eight, even if it is November two thousand and twenty two. <laughs> Um, do all the stuff for social media get involved with the Midcard Mess on Facebook if you're not already just search for the Midcard Mess uh, hit the like or the join button um, you'll get approved in no time at all and you'll be there to talk wrestling with everyone it's a really 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 busy group um, and it's not full of dickheads like a lot of wrestling groups on Facebook um, so it's, it's quite a nice group to be part of so get involved with that uh, until then we will be back next week with another episode of Raw is Retro only one thing left to do, money. Bye!